Good morning to everyone. It's a pleasure to share with you and uh, to welcome you on behalf of CAF. And we will begin our webinar today. There's over 120 people connected thus far. And I want to thank uh, all of our guests today. What we would like to do today would be to share a little bit about what we have to offer, the courses we have in mind, in this professional certificate in governance and public innovation, as well as a leadership for transformation program. My name is Natalie Herbasi. I am the developmental director for development and training. I want to thank you all for joining us and connecting with us today. I hope this can be a useful session for you that we can clear up any questions you may have about the program. And at the end of our session today that you sign up for these uh, exciting spaces. I want to let everyone know that we have simultaneous interpretation today. I'm speaking in Spanish, but there's a button in the lower part of your screen in which you will be able to choose a language channel in English or in Portuguese. I know there's lots of interest in people who are connecting from the Caribbean or from Brazil. So there is a chance to listen in the language of your preference. Over the course of this session, as well, if you want to share this conversation on social media, there's hashtag AprendeConCaf. You can also mention us on X and on Instagram as AgendaCaf. So to begin, we've divided the webinar into two stages. First, we'll have an opportunity to hear firsthand uh, the experience from some of the graduates of our programs. And then we'll be able to hear from the general and academic coordinators of the programs so they can tell us a little more about how the courses work, what the curriculum looks like, and the commitments that are expected from the students over the, the months of these programs. So we will get rolling with the formal part here of our welcome. Let me invite uh, Veronica, our head of knowledge, to be able to uh, open her microphone enable her camera and, and welcome us all here. She will speak to the importance of this ongoing learning process to be able to have a positive impact in the areas in which each of us are working. So thank you very much, Vero, for uh, connecting with us. I know you're in Washington in the midst of the, the spring meetings of the World Bank. I, it's a packed schedule you have. So thank you for taking the time and joining and, and speaking with us. Thank you, Natalia. It's uh, a pleasure to, to greet you and to be able to see everyone here. I wanted to start by thanking everyone for joining in this webinar. As we have this third round of the Professional Certificate in Governance and Public Innovation, and the second round of the Leadership for Transformation Program 2.0 that uh, we are promoting here through CAF. I want to thank everyone who's involved here from our corporate vice president, Cristian Asinelli, who has cast his strong support to all of these efforts for capacity building in the region. Natalie Herbasi, you heard from her, our director for institutional development and training, Pablo Rolando, our general coordinator of these professional certificate courses, as well as the academic coordinators who play an essential role in the content uh, that we have to offer with you. So on behalf of CAF, I want to thank you for the trust you've placed in us uh, and the 28 academic institutions with whom we uh, put these programs into action and coordinate. We have a very unique mix between local and regional approaches. And we think that we can capitalize on that through CAF support as well. In the case of the Leadership for Transformation Program 2.0, I want to especially recognize two new institutions. One is the Dom Cabral uh, Institution in Brazil, and the other is the University of the West Indies in Trinidad and Tobago. These two institutions are moving us one step further in terms of our institutional linkages and uh, moving us to be able to offer content in Portuguese and English as well. As the knowledge manager, for me, it is uh, a pleasure to be able to supervise and, and, and lead these efforts. 
we try to make these contributions to institutional strengthening, strengthening the and building the capacities of public officials and citizens. We think that is an essential role to play in Latin America and the Caribbean. We are looking for programs that can deepen knowledge that lead to the effective performance of our public officials in the region. Additionally, we try to include a perspective that strikes a balance between economic and social factors, political factors, and also now considering climate and gender factors as cross-cutting ideas that um, run through our region. We also try to make sure that our leaders have support in ethical values, democratic values, to be able to promote an inclusive democratic agenda. We believe that building capacity and leadership in different areas of our society is an urgent and necessary task, and one that is essential to be able to face the challenges before us. It is not just a matter of the old problems we used to face. Now in Latin America, we've had several years of low growth rates. We don't see a recovery in the short term horizon. We also see long-term challenges for inclusion, matters of poverty, issues of inequality. These are all issues that continue in our region and are generational. Now, we also have our sustainable development goals and the green agenda that the bank is trying to promote. And we are recognizing how we can spearhead this in the region and especially in the Caribbean. So to move forward together on these three agendas, which sometimes cannot happen simultaneously, we must have solid leadership that can analyze and mix and rise to these challenges. The idea of offering these professional certificates is for everyone to be able to learn, to reflect, to deepen our calling for public service, each of us from our, our own areas. So thank you for joining us. And I hope you have the chance to listen to the experiences and testimonies of our graduates and to register and sign up through our webpage. You won't regret it. And uh, that is what I wanted to share with you today with this, these brief remarks. Thank you again for your interest and I will uh, cede the floor. I'll give the floor back to Natalie. No, oh, thank you very much. And uh, again, uh, after you hear our graduates, uh, I encourage you all to, to sign up. But first I want to welcome Cristina Sinele, our Corporate Vice President for Strategic Programming at CAF. He is also in Washington, uh, sitting in those same meetings. But as uh, Veronica said, he is an enormous promoter of these capacity building processes, building skills, building knowledge. He has dedicated his professional life to promote these kinds of spaces so that we can all develop these capacities and skills and therein improve our work and begin to close the gaps that we see both in the public and private sectors, as well as in civil society. He is one of the, we believe that people who are better trained and uh, have uh, these, these deeper skills will be able to contribute to the development of their communities and countries. And so Christian, thank you as well for making some space in your, in your schedule. I know you're busy in Washington, but we're very glad you're able to join us here today. No, absolutely. Thank you very much and uh, good morning. Greetings to all. It is a pleasure to be here, to be able to join you in this space in which we are launching uh, our training and capacity building programs as part of CAF's mission, mission, in which as a development bank, we do not limit ourselves to working in uh, infrastructure, water, sanitation, development, which is part of what we do, but we also recognize the importance of developing and building these soft skills. They may be called or appear to be soft skills, but these are precisely the skills that allow us to scale up our capacity, state capacity to develop leadership. And these are the leaders who will move forward in the public policies for each of our countries. We believe these spaces for dialogue, for training, for sharing knowledge, for networking, these are opportunities in which you can learn not just a holistic and comprehensive 
training curriculum of the skills that you will need, but we'll also build a shared collective agenda, understanding what's going on in other countries throughout the region. In that regard, our training programs, as Veronica said, we have updated the, the vision of these programs over the last three years, but we have over 20, 25 years of experience in developing, designing these training programs, leadership building programs, and then the governance program. This has allowed us to develop a network of the graduates from our programs, which is now over 50,000 strong in the region. I believe that the importance of that is that these unique programs in Latin America and the Caribbean that has been developed as a joint effort between CAF and over 30 academic institutions in Latin America and the Caribbean to make these programs a reality. This allows us to build a capillary dynamic in which our different graduates, people who have gone through our governance and leadership programs, it goes beyond just in individual training beyond just the intersection of knowledge with all of the new tools that they need to work in the state, to work with the state. We also believe that essentially we're developing a network in Latin America and the Caribbean, which is unique. It's unique because the challenges that the world faces today, the challenges that we are facing in this context of extreme uncertainty in this context in which even though Latin America and the Caribbean is a region at peace, we are living in a world of conflict. And we need to continue to work to build and consolidate and develop that peace. In those spaces, what we need are public officials, leaders, men and women who are not just trained, not just have the technical knowledge and skills, but that also have the opportunity to link to a formal and informal network of professional contacts. So that when anything comes up, if there's a conflict, if there's an issue, they have the necessary networks to be able to help transform that reality. In that regard, this program, which we've been working on for many years, I can say without a doubt, that these programs have trained great leaders across the region. Nearly every day, I'm in a conference or I'm in an airport, I will find someone who has gone through these programs. They are serving as ministers, serving as counselors, serving as superintendents. There's an enormous number of people across the region And that's why we are so excited to have Matias Bianchi with us, who has been helping us to coordinate the governance program for so many years, as well as Solicito Soria and the leadership program, and the rest of the CAF team, Soledad, Natalie, and the, the management team with Veronica, as well as everyone on the country levels, all of the CAF officials, everyone who is contributing their experience here. These are programs in which we try to be as practical as possible, taking advantage of the experience and skills that our partner universities have to offer, but as well the practical experience of our officials who are in the field, those who are intimately knowledgeable of every last corner of Latin America and work very closely with the governments because we believe that this practical experience is also an essential part of what we can do. This kind of space for dialogue and training that CAF can offer as a development bank rooted in our belief in building state capacity as well as the capacities that can be generated for our network as a collective to be able to rise to the challenges of our region. These challenges go beyond just individual issues in each country. For us as a development bank, a regional vision 
is of the utmost importance. And in that sense, we believe that these programs will be a true benchmark in the training experience and capacity building for each of you. I'm not trying to sell you anything, but I do want to invite you to sign up and be part of our network of graduates. But we do believe these are programs that are life-changing in terms of the knowledge they can offer, as well as the network to which our graduates join rooted in the knowledge and experience of all of the countries in the region. You'll be able to hear that firsthand from our graduates, and you'll be able to see that firsthand over the course of the program. We believe that there's an exciting training and capacity, pro capacity building programs that we have to offer. And for everyone who has this calling to public service, it is a way to engage with other people, other professionals who think and feel the way that many of us here do, in which we're committed to making a change, to making an impact throughout our work, and that what we do, we do with love and we do with this calling for public service. So allow me to invite you to take advantage of this opportunity, to listen to these experiences, to ask any questions you may have, and then once this program begins, We'll have the opportunity to continue to talk with you. I'm sure we'll be able to get together in person over the course of the program and to do what we're trying to do through CAF, which is to improve the quality of life for all of the people living in our region, a region that faces many problems, but is also a region of solutions. We have the food the world needs, we have the energy the world needs, and we have the talent that the world needs. So I would invite you all to take advantage of this opportunity to enroll in these programs. This can be a watershed moment for your lives and careers. So thank you very much for these few minutes that you have uh, given me to, to speak with you. And I hope to be able to see you all, everyone connected here, see you in, in each of the programs. Thank you, Christian. Effectively, there is an element of collective responsibility, and we are all involved. We from CAF, what we're trying to promote is to offer these spaces to help to um, precisely give the skills needed for facing problems when you want to help communities to face their problems or improve their standards of living with these uh, two programs. We are focusing on helping to strengthen not only technical knowledge and soft skills, but also to promote values related to democracy, to innovation with leadership and helping everyone from their place to do their job more efficiently and collaborating with this collective uh, construction that is so necessary to improve our countries. Now we're going to hear the remarks by our graduates. We have invited four people, but one of them uh, had some inconveniences and is not able to join us. So today we have Rosa Montero from Colombia, Iris Suyaba from Honduras. They are two graduates from this uh, professional uh, certificate on uh, public governance and innovation. They. Uh, finished the program last uh, year, and we have Santiago Velasco from Colombia as well, and he graduated from uh, the two programs, the public professional certificate in public governance and innovation on one year, and the next year he studied the Leadership for Transformation 2.0 program. Rosa, Iris, and Santiago, welcome. Thank you for taking the time to be with us today and for sharing your experiences while you were studying with CAF and the partner universities. So I would like to um, ask you all, and you take turns to, to provide an answer, what were these uh, skills and tools that you obtained uh, through these programs and that help you to exercise uh, your leadership more efficiently? Rosa, the floor is yours. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to all of you joining us today. 
I think the main skill I obtained from this uh, professional certificate has to do with uh, approaching complex problems from the user experience. When I uh, enrolled in this professional certificate, and I am uh, holding the position of uh, mayor of a municipality in Bogota, and when we were facing uh, problems, the traditional mainstream uh, responses were not enough to uh, meet the requirements of citizens. So I think this was very helpful obtaining these tools, for example, in, that I got from the design thinking um, training. We were able to think about uh, different uh, ways of uh, providing responses uh, to problems. We were able to uh, provide solutions for the waste collectors. So we thought about solutions that were beneficial to all the stakeholders involved. Thank you, Rosa. Iris, I wanted to mention that Iris is joining us from her cell phone because she's uh, traveling at this moment in Honduras. So thank you, Iris, for this significant effort. Good morning, everyone. For me, it's a blessing to share with you my experience. The main skill we were able to develop has to do with communicating the new profile of projects, the, the realities in each one of our countries and what we need. Several profiles uh, were developed. Uh, sometimes we have ideas, but we don't know how to give shape and how to structure this. and how to communicate this so that someone can uh, trust us in institutions. So we are able to provide better opportunities for our families and our communities and somehow give a contribution for a general improvement from our area. So I think this is the most uh, complex thing it was useful to meet professionals from different fields and be able to reach concrete goals and see that we are moving towards the same objective, the common benefit. Yes, we have realized uh, about uh, common public problems across the region. So that's the best way to find a solution. We believe these programs uh, allow a dialogue among peers that face similar uh, problems and that they can share experiences and look for common solutions and the most appropriate solutions for uh, their problems. Santiago, can you share your experience? Thank you, Natalie. Good morning, everyone. I think there are two common things uh, between the two professional certificates. I found it was uh, very useful, this approach about complex problems and uh, unconventional thinking, because we can think beyond the problem we are facing uh, at that moment. We have the opportunity to develop a holistic uh, perspective so that we can think about more efficient actions to have a better outcome in the future. Another approach that I like a lot from the two professional certificates has to do with the development of a project. And it's a significant challenge because in a very fast manner, in two or three months, you need to uh, take all of the experiences and create a team and work with that team in order to develop a final proposal in a very short time. I think this is one of the most interesting things, because that's one of the challenges you face in public spaces. And this was a continuous challenge. So I think it, this is very helpful. I like to highlight this, that you can apply this to a developing project. So I also coincide with Rosa with the user experience approach. This was something innovative when I started this professional certificate in public governance. I had never had this uh, perspective of user experience. So 
it was interesting for me. It was interesting to take into account uh, the figure of buyer persona, to speak with users. That changes the dynamics uh, at the moment of uh, formulating projects. You can uh, get the stakeholders involved. Sometimes the way things are in the public sphere does not allow this. Um, about the Leadership for Transformation 2.0 program, uh, was this concept of virtuous leadership, the possibility of speaking, taking into account uh, core values such as beauty, uh, respect, among others, then you can precisely contribute with the projects to uh, develop a better world. The beauty, justice, as core values was something that I had never seen in a training program. So that uh, makes you think about uh, common uh, good, about uh, ethical leadership, ideals that go beyond the uh, material things. So that for me, that was very valuable. Thank you, Santiago, for your uh, experience. I wanted to ask you, why do you think that if you're, for example, if you're holding a public position or if you hold a position in, a, in an NGO, in a, any kind of a workspace, why do you think it's important to combine technical knowledge and soft skills? Because we all tend to focus on learning technical skills, but not take into account the soft skills. Why soft skills? Based on your experience, why do you think they are important? Please don't be shy. I wanted to say the following. In the public sphere, public officials and collaborators tend to do things the traditional way, the way they have been done always. So when I decided to take part in this professional certificate, I had the idea of getting tools that could help me to help my uh, work team uh, to go beyond. We have the same problems we have always uh, faced, but it would be great to find alternatives for citizens. So in general, uh, in public, in the public space, it's very difficult to manage change, because for p people it's easier to go through a path that they already know. So, in our in this professional certificate, there was an emphasis on the uh, user experience to uh, focus on the user's perspective. So that was helpful for us to get the leadership skills, so that we can. Uh, exercise and influence in the colleagues working uh, with us to uh, take into account alternative solutions for problems. So it is always good to uh, get technical uh, knowledge, of course, to move forward to uh, reach solutions, but obviously soft skills that we were able to develop in this uh, professional certificate in public governance and innovation somehow gave us the opportunity to have an impact in our teams because i i was uh, able to talk to them and encourage them to see things in a different way from the user's perspective and to explore alternative for the solutions of uh, problems instead of resorting to the typical response oh we have always done things this way so this was significantly useful in practice and that is why i wanted to share uh, my experience so precisely that's what i lived during the professional certificate before giving the floor to iris and santiago i wanted to ask you something else i know it might be uncomfortable for a maximum authority to say well um to be humble in front of your team but somehow that makes you think about leadership modeling because you're telling them 
look, I take time to learn new things. I take time to learn new tools, to understand things from a different perspective. But you also call them to do the same. You uh, talk to them and uh, told them, we need to think things differently. There are other methodologies. We have the capacity of innovating and we are aware that public officials do not like innovation too much because then you have to face certain risks. So tell us about this process of making the decision of saying, well, despite of the fact that I'm a major, that I'm supposed to know everything, and I came from the political field, but also from the technical field, but finding a space to study for six months, that's very significant. Yes, Natalie. As soon as I started, as soon as I began in this program, I shared it with my team because in our local work, we deal with issues like this, such as different citizen requests, issue of sanitation, the issues that many of our citizens face and the concerns they have with the municipal administration. When through the program, I began to deconstruct many of the different concepts and ideas I had. It's something I was able to pose in our team meetings to see the ways we could deal with some of the workload that they all had that had to do with listening to citizens to be able to understand our users' perspectives, outlook, and design appropriate solutions. Some of the issues that we have the most complaints and issues with from our citizens, they have to do with managing our public spaces, managing our sanitation and waste. And what I proposed for my team was instead of responding, well, this is not up to us, this is not our responsibility, it's not our jurisdiction, to try to find ways to truly implicate and involve ourselves in listening in understanding the concerns of our citizens. This is what we heard through the innovation program understanding the pain that all of our citizens felt by seeing their streets and their communities with trash and waste and to say, we understand, how can we begin to build these solutions? Even at the start, they didn't feel so comfortable because it took more time than it would have taken otherwise to respond just saying, this isn't up to me, it's not my problem, it's not my job. I do believe they were able to recognize the important investment of that time and to see that the ultimate outcome would be a, a reduction in the problems and the complaints by truly understanding and tackling the pain and the problems that our citizens felt. No, thank you. Thank you very much and, and for your openness and candor in sharing that. Uh, now let's hear from Iris and Santiago as we hear about the importance of this balance in gaining technical skills as well as soft skills. Iris. Sure, I'm happy to share my experience. For me, this program was a, a holistic training program in which we were able to have different kinds of skills and, and, and abilities that we developed. I do not hold a public position, but I can share my experience uh, for my role as a project manager. in understanding opportunities, understanding how to present those opportunities through the public administration and to see how we can, um, how we can benefit the population. It, in my professional life, I work in the coffee industry, I'm a cupper, and it was important for me to recognize the, how my project could be involved here. I had the blessing of being able to engage with different people who were working in the public sphere. We were able to engage with the mayor, with the legislators, to see how we could have the linkage between civil society, public administration, and the different stakeholders involved.
we know that if we just limit ourselves to technical skills and and only the technical side, we might miss how to orient it to the common good and recognize environmental issues, sustainability issues, inclusion, and how we can truly listen to the population because we must be oriented towards the, the success of our countries and communities. For me, it was a real opportunity because from my work rooted in a rural area, sometimes it's harder for us to be able to gain these management skills and training. This program truly changed my outlook. It changed my vision of, of how I manage these projects. And I was able to overcome some fear to be able to be, to be able to be clear on what we need in any area where we work, whether we're in, in the city or in the rural areas. We were able to have a, a, a real network of, of contacts. I think Edis has some uh, connectivity issues. Sorry, we're not able to hear Edis anymore, but when she gets her connection back, but in, in the meantime, we can hear from Santiago. Thank you, Natalie. I think one thing that's key to understand is that even in our organizations, we, we are people and public problems are people problems. Uh, one moment, Santi, uh, perhaps the technical team can uh, shut off Edie's microphone. Go ahead, Santiago. So recognizing that organizations and public problems are made up of people and people problems, we thought it was very important to learn to engage and relate to each other in a better way with the people around us, with the users, with the possible beneficiaries of our programs and our ideas. Also in this experience, in the last year, uh, we were able to as well include some of this knowledge in the ongoing projects that we had. We were able to learn to put ourselves in others' shoes. We were able to learn that nothing is truly personal and that everything has a solution. There's always uh, an agreeable solution to be able to find a uh, mutually, mutually agreeable solution for the common good. So both in the professional certificate as well as the leadership program, we got some key tools and skills that we were able to use over the last year in many negotiation programs, negotiation processes, to be able to recognize how we could be successful, how we could truly incorporate these skills in which one person has to learn to give a little, the other person has to learn to give a little, and we can sign, find a place to meet in the middle for the common good. And recognize that that can produce very positive outcomes. I think that after the training program, I've been much more successful in the negotiation spaces and processes where I've been able to intervene. I had some very positive experiences, uh, for example, recently, in which we were working with a, a team in a prior consultation. And we were working with a team of counterparts and consultants. They were very used to having a lot of direct conflicts and a lot of direct uh, battle and engagement. And when we came and proposed spaces for dialogue, for negotiation, that were steeped in technical skill, but also with the opportunity to learn from each other, to share knowledge with each other, we made some very good progress. And over the course of just a couple of months, we were able to move forward and, and put those skills and abilities into practice. It's been very useful in negotiations, in building partnerships and agreements. As the vice president of the bank said, that's the idea is to be able to 
come to agreements, to be able to come to common understandings, to come to a common agenda in different spaces that allow us to support and accompany the communities. And beyond just the alliances that we can have within the certificate course, it also gives us the tools to build alliances looking outward with other individuals and organizations and communities to be able to grow together and to be able to build a healthy country and society together. Thank you, Santiago, for sharing that. Uh, Rosa mentioned that she had to uh, sign off and I know Edie's had some uh, connectivity issues because she is on the road in Honduras. So thank you, uh, Santiago. Um, we will let you go from, from this space. We're very glad you're able to share your experience. And let me give the floor now to Pablo Rolando, the Director of the Professional Certificate in Governance and Public Innovation, and Matias Bianchi, the Academic Coordinator, so they can tell us a little more about what it's all about, what it looks like. Um, we've begun to receive a few, a few questions about the logistics um, and so as soon as we're done with the presentation, I will uh, share it with you and share those answers. Thank you, Natalie. Uh, thank you all and welcome. It's a pleasure to be connected here with you. And Matias and I are looking forward to, to sharing some information about the Professional Certificate in Governance and Public Innovation. Let me share a brief presentation with you uh, so that you can get a sense of what this is all about. I understand you can see my screen. You can see there's many uh, allied institutions. And let me tell you a little more about what it's about. This third edition of our professional certificate, uh, Matthias and I redesigned this in, in 2021. We conceive of this as a space for learning, collaboration, networking, teamwork, innovation, and experimentation. That's the idea of this professional certificate in governance and public innovation with students from throughout Ibero-America, from Mexico through Argentina, including the English speaking Caribbean and even students uh, in Europe and in Spain who are uh, joining remotely. What will you learn through this? you will get training on current and necessary issues in a unique regional program. You will learn from CAF experts and specialists, as well as guests of CAF and of the allied universities in our program. You will learn about the 2030 agenda, the CAF agenda, the SDGs, and you also learn to define problems and pose solutions to local problems using a broader and uh, agile methodology in terms of team thinking and having recognizing the public value. This is something Rosa mentioned, designing solutions that are citizen oriented and citizen centered. Students will have the opportunity to share their expertise and engage with the public officials from countries in the region. What we are hoping to do through this program is to train development agents, to train people working in civil society, in the private sector, but everyone who is linked to and engaging with state and public policy. And we cover matters of governance and innovation. Uh, Matias can speak to this as well. We are also looking to develop a bank of development initiatives. Thus far, with the first edition in 2021 and the second in 2022, we now have 20 projects that have been designed. Interesting projects with some very innovative solutions that are have a regional vision and they're locally rooted. That's part of the idea is to develop these initiatives that can later be implemented on a local level. And then the third objective is to have uh, a network of development agents in the region we're working with around 1,500 graduates from these first two editions in Brazil and Panama and Uruguay and all of the all of the countries where we have students participating in this professional certificate. Here you can see the universities and the different countries where we are working. There's 18 universities 
spread across 20 countries in Latin America, the Caribbean, and Spain, some of the most uh, prestigious universities in the region. Some are partners from previous development programs. Others are universities that have joined recently. Um, they are all very highly prestigious institutions in their countries. And thus far, we've had over 3,000 students who have gone through uh, the two editions, 2,500 graduates from these 18 universities in 20 countries. Uh, Matias, I'll give you the floor. Uh, Matias, you have your microphone off. Good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you all are. My name is Matias Bianchi. Uh, it is my honor to provide academic coordination for this professional certificate program. What I would like to highlight is how unique this opportunity is in the region, in which we have, on one hand, the opportunity to engage, understand, and explore global debates, regional cooperation, but also with a real approach and focus on local action in each of our territories. I think that's interesting and unique, and it's one of the ways that we have designed the program. So with these three important components, we have training that CAF is offering, uh, remote learning spread across three academic modules, in which we're able to join into debates around public administration, innovation, digital transformation, gender inclusion. climate change, we're trying to incorporate all of those global debates and because Latin America and the Caribbean is, is part of the global debate, we're affected by the global agenda. That is part of what CAF has to offer. At the same time, we've partnered with 18 of the best universities in the region so that each country, in each country, it can be grounded and rooted and act in the territories and according to the local agendas in each country. This is where we see these hybrid learning modes for each country. And then the third component, which I think is important, is uh, local advocacy. In the six months that the certificate course lasts, we'll be developing a series of tools so that students can develop advocacy programs locally grounded and rooted that you can do in each of your territories. Additionally, there's a incubator space in these projects to be able to accelerate the product projects, to be able to interconnect them, to be able to see how we can breathe life into them and make them a reality. All of this comes within the framework of the SDGs, which is an overarching framework in which CAF conceives of its development and training. Especially SDGs 16 and 17 that have to do with peace, justice, and uh, societies with greater solidarity. I did want to share a little more about the uh, training outline. Let me uh, get into that. Let me just go over this uh, quickly, then you can uh, read through it yourselves. But our training is organized into three academic modules in which CAF offers half of these subjects online uh, with leaders from the region in, in all of the languages, that is English, Spanish, and Portuguese. We will have these three modules. One is society, economy, and politics and transformation. The second is governance and political administration. And then a third module has to do with collaborative, green, inclusive, and sustainable economies. And then with the universities, there's a proposed slate of subjects and classes. And then each university can adjust that according to the most pertinent and relevant national debates. 
What's important to highlight is that each year with the team and under Natalie's leadership, we are challenged to continue to think how we can improve each year, what else we can include each year. This year we're including AI in public administration, the role of sustainable development, the role of the state in public policy. We have an evaluation and assessment of what's missing, what we can include, and how we can incorporate some of those elements and share them with you. I hope you enjoy this um, program. It's something that we very, are very proud to be a part of. Thank you, Mati and Paolo for your presentations. I'm going to share some questions we have received before giving the floor to Soledad and Pablo Cito before they speak about leadership for training. People are asking how they can enroll and once they fill the form, how do they know that they were effectively admitted? Can you talk about this process? We have several questions related. Pablo, can you provide some clarity about this? You can go to CAF website if you want to enroll. There's a, a single form where you can sign up. And we uh, have received the applications uh, as well as the universities. Universities uh, contact the students to let them know if they were admitted or not for the programs. We have a certain criteria to be met that are different depending on the country. So we invite you all to submit your applications. You need to provide uh, certain personal data and upload your uh, CVs so that we can uh, carry out the selection process for this program. But uh, this uh, application process is completely free and is uh, available up to April the 30th. So applicants uh, are asking how much do they need to wait before they receive uh, the admission notification? Well, that depends on the university, but it's about two to three days. And then they will receive a response to their application to let them know if they were selected or not. Is it an email sent by CAF or by the universities? Universities are in charge of sending the admission notification. But if you, if you have a problem or the university doesn't contact you on time, you can submit an email to cursosvirtuales at uh, CAF.com and we will uh, try to provide a timely response to your qu queries. Well, so far, we have 2,500 people uh, submitting applications. So before giving the floor to Sole and Pablo, uh, pe people are asking about the cost of uh, registration. And I have said that that depends on each country. But can you provide some ideas about the cost of uh, these professional certificates in each country? CAF? covers most of the cost of these professional certificates. The general cost is about $3,000 per student, but CAF covers between 60 and 70% of uh, these uh, costs, covering different costs that have to do with logistics and uh, the academic aspects of these uh, programs. But the student needs to cover uh, a fee that may range from uh, $150 to $700, depending on the country, the academic load, among other criteria. I would like to highlight that the, the students that uh, enroll for this program, they need to study this program in the country they uh, are enrolling from. The idea is to provide a fair opportunity to people located in different countries. If you are in Bolivia, you need to study this program through a Bolivian university. And if you are in Colombia, you need to study through a Colombian university. But the cost is different uh, depending on the country. 
you can go to CAF website. You can see the list of opportunity of universities there, and you can find the pr the price that you need to pay. Thank you, Pablo. This was information about this uh, professional certificate uh, in public governance and innovation. There are other questions, but now I want to give the floor to Soledad Gomez and Pablo Cito for them to speak about leadership for transformation. Thank you, Natalie. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to thank uh, the more than 300 people that have joined us uh, today uh, to uh, hear about the launching of this two professional certificates. Leadership for Transformation 2.0 program is a long-standing program for CAF. It uh, started to be talked in 2018 uh, to help uh, public officials to exercise uh, leadership for transformation and for more than uh, 10 years, more than 16,000 students have participated in 2022, uh, the content uh, was updated, and in 2023, this initiative was launched along with uh, eight countries, eight institutions. We had more than 400 graduates, more than 100 uh, final projects uh, about innovative uh, topics, uh, uh, economic regulations, climate change, gender issues. Mari, can you move on with the presentation? And there was a meeting of uh, graduates that represented uh, the eight best graduation projects uh, back in 2023. This was held in Paraguay. And uh, what Christian mentioned in his uh, presentation, the creation of a community of uh, graduates from our programs, creating a space uh, for networking, uh, mutual learning, a network of contacts and support and constant work. Next slide. This program, Leadership for Transformation, has the purpose of uh, strengthening the training of leaders of civil society and public and private sectors. And it's focused on the comprehensive uh, training of leaders in the community of Latin America and the Caribbean with the purpose of developing a leadership that uh, help us to face the challenges across the region. This is a program that is unique at the regional level, not only because of the joint uh, effort among different countries based on the different variety of uh, experiences, but it's focused on uh, developing positive leadership uh, oriented towards community based on the main topics of the uh, CAF agenda, digital transformation, climate change, financial education. And in 2024, we are adding new innovative uh, topics such as the uh, 2030 agenda, SDG inclusions, among others. It is also oriented uh, towards developing leadership skills uh, based on ethics, uh, on human values, uh, in commitment with uh, those who are in need. And we try to support these leaders uh, that have a strong uh, vocation of service. We have uh, promoted alliances with other institutions. We have two new institutions, more than 10 allies in 13 countries across the region, Argentina, Bolivia, Brazil, Chile, Costa Rica, Ecuador, El Salvador, Paraguay, Panama, Peru, Trinidad and Tobago, and Venezuela. Next slide, please. The uh, duration is uh, six months. We are going to start on May the 6th. Uh, it finishes on November the 30th. We have more than 110 hours of training. Uh, it's a um, mixed uh, modality on site and online and the cost is going to be different depending on the country where you are participating from and before speaking about registration let me give the floor to Pablo who's going to speak about the methodology during this program thank you Sole welcome I would like to thank the, all the participants and the panel members it is an honor to uh, share information about this program with you and show you the methodology that uh, aims at combining the on-site and uh, 
online methodologies. We have 27 asynchronic uh, virtual lessons and uh, five uh, lectures with international experts from the partner universities. So you will have asynchronic uh, content, but you will have also the opportunity of attending uh, these lectures with uh, experts from the partner universities. So we are combining general topics related to the realities of each one of the countries of the participants. So this hybrid uh, approach combines the best of the two modalities. So let me share with you some highlights. Let's delve into uh, the information of the modules. During the first module, we're going to uh, speak about the general aspects of leadership, the main challenges that leaders uh, face. We will uh, speak about the importance of uh, culture, the vision, community. As it has been said, from a deep vision of uh, uh, servicial and positive leadership in module two, we're going to speak about self uh, knowledge to see inside ourselves as leaders, to uh, understand our mission as leaders, uh, our emotions to pay attention to the attitudes and the skills that uh, derive from my personal experience, taking into account our cultural uh, aspects. This is a journey towards uh, our inner self and we will also study uh, aspects related to uh, knowledge science or behavior, behavioral science, I correct myself. Then we will see how leaders should collaborate. And it's very important to start listening, the role of active listening and important topics such as empathy, uh, teamwork, compassion. This is such an interesting uh, topic. Uh, I was reading recently an author that speaks about virtuous leadership, compassion uh, related and powered by justice. Then justice linked to wisdom as uh, values of the person. And this wisdom also linked to power, the capacity of uh, making projects a reality and how this power is closely related to compassion, a new vision of a virtuous leadership. And also in this uh, module three, that is a very important module, we will see aspects related to effective communication, uh, speaking skills, and um, in module four, we will speak about public leadership. We will analyze the role of uh, citizens in participation and democracy leaders. So important for current leadership. We will also uh, speak about uh, the importance of being cautious and negotiation tools as well. In module five, we will speak about uh, educa financial education and inclusion to promote and strengthen the um, entrepreneurship. These notions are always complemented by our experts in project management and everything that we work on is based on evidence. And then this is a transition to module six in which we will have time to develop our final projects. All these topics, as you can see, are integrated in a, a, with a cross-cutting approach, taking into account topics uh, such as uh, circular economy, climate change, uh, digital transformation, and CAF experts are going to be closely working with us in order to provide the necessary knowledge. And we have created as well two virtual fora 
where students can uh, share um, literature and other ideas. And the second fora, forum is for them to comment about uh, their um, preferred leaders in their countries. That way, we will be able to know more about our future leaders. And we will see these new leaders that will inspire us in the future as true beacons. Uh, this is a very attractive proposal. It is truly solid. And this will end with a final graduation project. This is a complementary project to this uh, professional certificate uh, on leadership. And I invite you to uh, sign up for the two professional certificates. And precisely, we want to invite you to start walking this very interesting path of comprehensive training. Thank you, Pablo. And just to, to highlight that, registration uh, to be able to apply is done through www.caf.com. And registration for the leadership uh, program, it's open till April 26th. If you have any questions, you can write to Curso Virtuales at caf.com. So then we have uh, questions from people in Bolivia, for example who see that the program doesn't appear to be listed in Bolivia, but if they can take it from another country, they have uh, the same question from Costa Rica. Wonderful, thank you for those questions. Uh, this year, Costa Rica will be able to join in the program in alliance with El Salvador, with uh, Dr. Jose Gustavo Guerrero Diplomatic Institute. People in Bolivia will be able to join in the program at the Continental University in Peru. And applicants in Venezuela can be in the ECC University in Colombia. I have some other questions here. Some questions about the cost. We haven't mentioned the cost of the leadership program. Can you share something about that? Yes, Natalie. Uh, the the quest the the cost depends on the country and on the university. In that regard, I invite anybody interested in applying to look at the CAF webpage, where we list the specific information by country by university for the cost in each country. Wonderful. Let me see if we've answered all the questions. Pamela, Fernanda, Oliveira. There was questions about the, the, the flow of when they get a response. The question about uh, Venezuela. We're doing this through the UCAP as a partner in Venezuela for a professional certificate. Leonardo tells us that he was a uh, student in a previous version of the program in the San Andres University in 2017. And now the professional certificate in governance and public innovation is built on the spirit of that program, but it is not the same program. And so if you are interested in uh, refreshing and updating some of that knowledge, uh, take a look and we invite you to, to sign up. Given that the professional certificate in governance and public innovation is going to be given by the Catholic University of Cordoba in Argentina. We saw some questions as well come through in Portuguese and English. We we're able to put those in the queue. Uh, so good. We hope we're able to answer all of your questions. We are just an email away. You can find us at cursovirtuales.caf.com and we're happy to answer any of your questions. We had over 400 people connected uh, here today. We're very glad to connect with all of you and, and thank you all very much. Let me leave you with this final invitation and reminder. It is not just a matter of having the experience of taking these courses and learning new skills and sharpening those soft skills that we talk about today and understanding our region from a holistic view. As Matias said, these two programs are 
unique because they're the only programs in which simultaneously all of the students, regardless of the country from which they're based, they'll be looking at similar content and will have spaces in which they can link, engage, understand the experiences in other countries, hear from each other, share and address specific topics. But beyond that, once you sign up to our courses, you become part of our alumni community. And in that community, we want to make sure you can continue your learning journey, share experiences and connect. Connect to other people who are going through some of the same issues, who have some of the same concerns, who are dealing with some of the same problems and to foster that dialogue. Over the course of the year we've had so far a gathering of our graduates in Caracas, another gathering in Bolivia, another gathering of our graduates in El Salvador. This week, uh, Monday and Tuesday, we were in Paraguay, in Asuncion, in which we had a gathering of uh, just the, the top graduates of the Leadership for Transformation program. And we continued to strengthen that network and went to visit a com community as we had a leader from that community who took the course and has handed over the baton to two other indigenous leaders who will be part of the Leadership for Transformation course this year. We'll be in Chile in Santiago on April 29th for another gathering of our graduates in those countries. This is a space in which once you get involved, once you get connected to our courses, then you will stay connected because we know if you are here, if you are getting trained through any of our programs, it's because you have a genuine interest in improving the quality of life and administration in your countries, in your communities. And that is why we want to stay connected to all of you. Let me remind you that registration is open until the end of the month through our webpage, www.caf.com. If you have any questions, you can write to Cursos Virtuales, that's one word, lowercase, at caf.com. And then in the chat, we've provided the, the links and specific information of the programs in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. And we hope to see you very soon. We hope you all sign up and classes begin on May 6th. We'll see you there because we have a first opening session. Thank you all very much. Thanks to Pablo and Soledad on the, on the CAF side. Pablo Cito and Matias from our academic coordinators. Our gratitude to the nearly 30 universities and academic institutions that are accompanying us over the course of these programs locally. We are proud to have the academic accompaniment from all of these institutions, which are very well known, very prestigious institutions in their countries and have quite a, a broad geographical reach in their countries. And they are fully aligned with CAF's goals in these training programs. So we will close with that. Thank you very much. I would love to have uh, a final view with all of the all of the speakers and to take uh, a picture as well with all of the participants. Uh, who were sending in your questions. We've seen some people mention that they've already signed up, that they're in the process of signing up. So thank you once again, thanks to all of you, to the technical team, Ashley, your team, the interpreters. Thank you for joining us in this webinar. We'll see you all soon.